quitting YouTube. That is the title of this video. I hate titles like that. And I never thought Sarah and I would be making a video with that as a title. And you see the strap line underneath the thumbnail that says, we need to talk. Well, we do. And if you're new here, new to our channel, this video isn't for you. In fact, I'll put a little link in the corner of the screen now of a video that I think would be really good for you to see. We're all about early retirement and traveling the world, all that kind of stuff. No, this is for the people who've been with us for some time and uh, support us in whatever way that is. And this is gonna be a long rambling video. I've got, I've got paper notes. We've never made a video like this. That is to say, everything's always scripted. This isn't gonna get any more real and you need to, you need to hear this really. So I'm gonna go through my notes here because if I don't, I'll just end up rambling and I don't wanna do that. So quitting YouTube, I'm gonna talk about that a bit later on. I wanna give you some context before I get into that. But this is gonna be uh, totally honest, totally me. As I say, nothing like we've ever recorded before. And I appreciate you being here with me for this. As I'm setting off on this walk, I've no idea how long this is gonna be. You do, because you could probably see at the bottom of the screen, it could be an hour, it could be 10 minutes, it could be two hours. I've only got two and a half hours left on the battery, so it'll be less, be less than that. There may well be some bad language in this video. That's because I use bad language <laughs> and uh, I'm not gonna be editing this. This is a stream of consciousness. Anything that slips out of my mouth, slips out. That's what it is. So, you might be able to tell I'm in a bit of pain. And that's kind of the crux of everything, really. And that is, when I was growing up, well, when I say growing up, I mean up to the age of retirement, which was at the age of 52, never really been ill really nothing serious that you'd say that i was ill and if you speak to me any, any of my work colleagues and some of them do watch these videos they wouldn't say that i was a sick note i was always off work no i was fine you know i've, I've always suffered with migraines and things that have caused me some issues but i'm all right you know no big issues if you've been with us for a while you'll know i had an awful fall about four years ago that totally shattered my, um, what's it called, shoulder blade, or I can't remember the, the official name for it, uh, really badly, so badly in fact that the NHS in the UK had never seen anything like it before. It was literally in a thousand pieces and had to grow back into something resembling a shoulder blade. It isn't the same shape, isn't the same shape as a shoulder blade today, but it's near as damn it, and I'm comfortable with it. That's the first time I've really had a serious issue. And I think that is the start of everything else that's happened and is happening to me. I think it all kind of stems from that, physically stems from that. I'm no medical profession. I'm sure there are medical professions, professionals watching this video. You'll probably stick in the comments and let me know your thoughts on that. Now, sorry, I'm out of breath because of the pain. I literally didn't sleep last night. So it's now 7 a.m. And you know when people say, I say it, oh, I didn't sleep a wink last night. That probably means you're awake for half hour. I didn't sleep a wink last night. Didn't sleep once. So let me give you a bit of background on why this is so important. Well, Oh, by the way, I don't want you sitting there thinking, oh my God, he's got some kind of terminal illness. I haven't. Do not panic. Do not worry. And if that's all you needed to hear, you can click away. You don't need to watch any more of this. But ever since we started traveling, which 
coincides with recovering from falling down the stairs and the whole shoulder blade issue. Um, I've never been healthy. My whole life I've been healthy, sat behind a desk. Now, I'm no longer sat behind a desk, although we'll come on to that in a minute. I've never been so unhealthy. So if you've been following us, you'll know I had issues in Malaysia. I had issues in Athens. I've literally had issues everywhere. And Sarah and I were joking actually the other day to say, we don't feel we've really properly visited an area or a country unless I've had an opportunity of testing out their local healthcare. It's funny, it is funny, but it's serious as well. It's true. I used to be, I don't know, someone who didn't know how to access healthcare. Now I can do it in multiple languages, countries and continents. I'm an expert and I don't want to be. So the issues I've had are things like uh, Oh, I think it's called Manieri's disease, and uh, that, that's effectively a bit like um, vertigo, I think. That comes and goes, so I've got that issue. But I've been suffering my back for now over a year, and <clears throat> it gets better, and I think I'm okay, and then it gets worse again, and so on and so on. And I guess my problem with it is, I know my back is a weak spot for me, it's, a, it's an issue. I also know that my dream is world travel. That means sticking backpacks on and things like that. I need my back to be strong. I'm desperate, desperate to do exercise to strengthen my back. But I know at the moment, if I put any pressure on, if I really try and do that exercise, it's my undoing always is. Oh, oh, you know, that was something in bloody Athens where I needed to go and see physio and all that kind of stuff purely because I did a really light workout as step one of getting fit and um, didn't work instantly. You might be thinking now, uh, if he's feeling so bad, why is he walking? He should go and sit down. I'll tell you what, sitting down, laying down is a night at the moment all i ever want to do at the moment is walk because that's the only time i get relief this pain i've got at the moment is kind of a good pain you know that you know what i mean it's like oh i can feel it all moving that's good i think the cocodamol and ibuprofen is helping with that as well anyway so that's the issue <sighs> pain is an issue i'm going to come back to all of the pain and what it means to our channel shortly. But now I've got your attention. I just want to talk about our channel and, and talk about what we're doing because this does relate to the pain as well and, and may relate to why you might think from time to time how we approach our channel is a bit schizophrenic, I guess. And that is, um, we did a bit of a pivot on our channel recently. Um, our first couple of years of our YouTube channel was all about the travel and was exciting, exciting for us to create and I know for many of you really um, pleasurable to watch. The um, thing is, for us, let's just cut to the quick here, we retired, so we're not young 25 year old YouTubers who are doing all of this for the money and will do any crazy thing because they're looking to get a payout on it. We don't need to do that. We've earned our money and we have retired, which is all good. But doing travel content is a lot of work because if you, you know, I always talk about this one, but we made a video about the Acropolis in Athens and I wanted to make a Steven Spielberg masterpiece on that video. And that meant, I don't know how long that took. It, it was a lot longer than the day you see in the video. It took probably seven days work if not more, to produce that one video. And the day that we went to the Acropolis, 
I didn't even really see it because all I was focused on is making a video. So we're traveling the world. Our dream is world travel. And I found that we were traveling and I wasn't seeing anything because I was so wrapped up and focused on creating really engaging um, travel videos. And Sarah found that a struggle as well, to be honest, because she didn't jack it all in to be Steven Spielberg's right hand man. That wasn't her objective. And I didn't even ask her if that was her objective at the time. I just, I just, it was osmosis. We just did it. Anyway, so we did it for a couple of years. And then you'll probably see for the most of the third year, we did all sorts. We tried all sorts because we knew what we wanted to do and we knew what people wanted to see. But there's another issue, this is a YouTube issue. And that is if you do travel content, as you move from country to country, your views plummet, absolutely plummet. Have a look back, have a look at our videos, have a look at our Australia content. Some of the most fun videos we've ever made, no one's interested. <laughs> so you put all that effort in, you go to a new country and you're spending time, you're not seeing the country, you're spending time putting these videos together. And it's, it's like, the YouTube gods are telling you, yeah, this isn't good. People aren't gonna watch this. And you move off on to another country and the same thing happens again. It's like a death by a thousand cuts. We don't get any joy from that. So we thought about what we can do and the pivot on our channel has been, well, we can talk about our travels and we can show our travels and show us living our dream because it really is an absolute dream world we live in. But how does that help you? Didn't think it did. It was, you know, living vicariously through us, I guess, is, is good. We do that with other YouTubers. Um, as, a, as a whole gamut of YouTubers, we love just watching because we love watching them and living vicariously through them. Uh, but what are you actually gaining other than entertainment? Very little. So we thought, we've got some real knowledge, some real specialist knowledge. We have worked out how to retire early and that involves the financial element. So, you know, all the low cost index funds and different methods for saving money and uh, all of loads of stuff. Um, the psychology of early retirement, that is to be, as we were planning for it, all the kind of issues and struggles that we suffered with that if you're going through the same you'll, you'll relate to it and go yeah I know those things that you you're going through because we're going through at the moment and then in retirement the kind of things that you have to think about which are different to when you were working we've got a gamut of knowledge and also I think there are a lot of YouTube channels out there that talk about financial independence and early retirement and all these people are still working we're not. Actually, that brings us on to the next point. It's very well organised, Neil. I know, it is a bit, isn't it? So, the next bit is around comments. We made a video a couple of years ago, I'll never forget this. We were in Thailand, and um, as I say, our videos used to take a long time to make. And uh, if you work on the basis that each video the shoot of it takes probably six hours from, from start to finish, times two, normally, there's two of us in the video, so on that specific video I'm talking about, there's two of us on it, so that's 12 hours. There's the planning for it, back then the planning was less. Let's be, let's be, uh, let's just say it's four hours. Four hours to plan, a lot less than it is today. So that's 10 hours, and then to edit the video and upload and all the other bits that go with it, that back then would have been, six to eight hours. So let's call it 18, 20 hours. We put all that effort in and then uh, you release a video, you get a few views and you earn £12.60 or something like that. I remember that one specific video where I think it was a Q&A and we were talking about the fact that we've retired and uh, blah, I don't know what it was. But there was a comment from someone that said, don't lie, you've got a YouTube channel. Now, you know, my nephew, who at the time had a paper round, was killing it compared to us, financially, 
Hang on, there's a van coming. Um, he, he was a superstar compared to us, making amazing money. And uh, that's the thing about comments on YouTube. We get so much wonderful feedback. 98% of comments are incredibly good. And for all of you watching this, I can't thank you enough. I really can't thank you enough for that. Then you get comments like that, that are just plain morning, just plain annoy you. There's not much you can do about it, morning. Um, and uh, not only that, um, we, we, were, we were told in the last week by one of our Patreons, no less, that we're just plain boring. And that's a tough pill to swallow. Uh, for me, I can handle it. But for Sarah, I'll let you in on a little secret here. She doesn't read any of the comments. I stopped the reading the comments when we were in uh, Mexico. So that was three years ago. Because although 98% of the comments are great, those odd one or two would put Sarah into a fit of depression. Understandably so. Some of them are pretty cutting. So she doesn't read the comments. What we do is I read the comments and I read out the good ones to Sarah. And it's like fuel to Sarah. Really fuels her up and really enjoys. This is great. This is another thing about YouTube. No matter what you do, there's always going to be noise in the background. But, you know, I don't own the world. Other people are allowed to do stuff as well, I'm sure. So, uh, that's that. And coming on to the schizophrenic nature of how we run our channel. If you comment on our videos, you'll see that sometimes I reply. So it's me that replies because I won't let Sarah look at the comments. I reply and you'll see that they're not just a comment of thanks for your comment. They're detailed. I think about it. I read the comments and I leave it. Then I come back and then I write the answer. And when I have those days to do that, it's normally about an hour, an hour, sorry, a day's work, eight hours work to reply to all of those comments. But then you'll see another video and we don't reply to any of them. This all comes back to my back and is coming on to what we're going to talk about in a moment about quitting YouTube. A little way off for that yet. I don't know how long we've gone on this so far, but um, my back goes good and then goes bad. And when it's bad, sitting down is the worst thing I could ever can contemplate doing. So sitting down and typing a response to a comment is horrific. So most of the time these days, I simply can't do it. Sarah can't do it because I won't let her read the comments. <laughs> so what you do need to know, oh, is, is the other thing. So you might think, yeah, that's something, but you don't even do a, like, a little heart or a thumbs up to say that you've read it. That's because I always hope I'm gonna get a chance to type a reply to it and hope that I have a gap in the pain in my back to actually sit down and do it. And often that just doesn't come. So I don't even give it a little heart or a, or a thumbs up. That isn't to say we haven't seen them. I look at those comments, every one of them, and I appreciate every one of them. And as I say, the ones that I think will do Sarah some good, I'll read them out to her as well. So uh, there you go. That's the that's the whole comment side of thing. Now, uh, let's just see if I miss it. All right, so another thing, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. Another thing is um, how we fund the channel. So you'll see, we've had this going for well over three years now, and we have never once been sponsored. That isn't to say we haven't been offered. I mentioned in a previous video that we've been offered, pardon me, ants, uh, been offered sponsorship and someone put in the comments to say, yeah, well, how many offers do you get, <laughs> for goodness sake? Well, I'll keep a folder of them. And at that point, they're over 200. It's probably about 250 since then because sponsors really do seem to like us at the moment. And we're getting contact from a lot of companies you all know very well indeed. Um, repeatedly contacting us 
to say they want to sponsor us and we refuse. We refuse point blank, even to the point that if it's a product that we love and we use, I don't want it because that's not what our channel is. Our channel is there to try and help you. And uh, if you look at it and think, oh, they're, they're pushing a specific product or a specific agenda here, it's going to make us seem a little bit untrustworthy. So uh, we don't fund ourselves through sponsorship. We could probably earn thousands every month through that. We don't. So we do have our Patreon community who are extremely dear to us. And um, I've recently set up a uh, buy me a coffee. You'll see all the details in the description below. So if you ever want to support us in any way, you know, you've got Patreon, you've got buy us a coffee and obviously anything anyone ever does um, or super thanks is the other thing we we're always amazed when people do a super thanks because because doing anything like that you want nothing in return it's weird you 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 send us x number of pounds or dollars um and that's the end of the transaction from your perspective i find that incredible that people can be so generous but if you ever want to do anything it's in the description below uh so um, coming back to health, um, let me, and I guess in a way this might be the crux of the video, let me explain how my head works and how our YouTube channel works. And that is, if you think about a computer game, you know in computer games where, you know, it might be a, a fighting game or something and, you're, and your power level keeps going down, you get down to like 10% and you, and you step back and... I don't play computer games, I assume it's what happens. You step back and get a chance to recharge and you're back into action. I'm guessing in those games, if you step back and wait till you recharge to 100%, when you go back into action, you're unbeatable, at least for a period of time, you're unbeatable. What I've done with YouTube is when the pain gets bad or any other issues, you know, we didn't make a video a few weeks ago because of bloody sinus issues and all that kind of stuff. But when things get bad, um, I let us get down to zero and then we won't release a video that week. I get up to 20% and I think 20% is enough for us to get back on the horse and start going again. And the uh, fact of the matter is, stupid, a stupid, excuse me, a stupid because it's not fair on you because you're not going to get the best videos from us if I'm always at 20%. And do you know what? It's not fair on Sarah because she wants to get out there and enjoy life. But because at the forefront of my mind is always YouTube and what can we do to just improve that little bit so I can get a video made, it's just not fair. Now, when we make a video now, you'll see Sarah's on probably every other video. Um, that's because I want Sarah to enjoy her life. Um, I don't want Sarah to be wrapped up in YouTube all the time because that wasn't her plan. <laughs> that was my plan. Um, but now, when we make videos, they're highly scripted. And the way I write a script is, um, first of all, I get an idea. And I've, I've got an idea book of, I think there's about 50 ideas in there at the moment. Um, I get the idea that I want to work on and I, look at this fella here. You all right? Just, uh, it's not how you're supposed to sit on a bench, you know. There's better ways of doing it. Um, I get an idea and then kind of let it germinate. Don't do anything with it. And then I'll sit down and I'll start writing and researching. And then... I will finish writing the whole video and it'll be two or three hours and then I shut the book on it and I do something else and then I come back to that video in two or three days time and every time without fail I open up what I've written and go that's awful that needs to switch up there or this whole video is wrong cut it or uh, there's a better way to articulate the message there's, there's so much that goes into it and from start to finish, a script takes about 10 hours. Shooting a video these days, because 
probably because I'm only given the 20%, is two or three hours, which is pretty damn good. And then the editing, I've got better at editing, so that's probably three hours. But here's a point. If I'm sat, oh, I hate that word at the minute. If I'm sat, oh, the park's locked. Let's look it around that way. I could go all the way around there. I don't know if that gate's open. Ah, I'm sat for 10 hours scripting and three or four hours editing. That saps all of my lifeblood because of the pain in my back. So what I always do is I let myself get to 20% and go, right, I'm gonna do it. And I sit down and do it. And then I'm back down to 5% and then I build up again for next week. It's just not right. So, are we quitting YouTube? Don't know. First of all, I don't want to. And Sarah definitely doesn't want to. She gets so much from it. You know, we could talk about that at some point in the future, what we do get from it, because I don't want this to be sounding like a moaning video. We're not moaning, I'm not moaning. I'm just talking to you because you're the people who support us. I wish this lot was shut up. Come on, mate, give it a break. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Um, but uh, we are gonna take a break because my back has got so bad. I'll just give you the, the short headlines of what's happened. I've been suffering my back for like the latest bout. Um, about a month and uh, it got so bad that we're in Spain at the moment. We found a local therapist who I had working on it. The guy's fantastic, really highly skilled and very confident and competent in what he's doing. And uh, he worked on it. I think we had five sessions and corrected my back. And then I'm up to like 20%. And what I want to be doing is building up so we can make the next video and so on. Uh, yesterday, I moved a, wait for it, cushion. I mean, this is important, this bit. Moved the cushion. And in moving that cushion, I totally put my back out. Totally. And I've got pain like I've never had in my lower back before. This is Saturday morning. The video that we had planned to come out this week, shelving it. Shelving it because, well, it's the start of a series about how much you need to retire. Um, really fun video, actually. But uh, that's what's gone on. Um, and we've got other really exciting stuff to share. It's things that we want to share that we can't, actually, at the moment because of... Um, arrangements we got with other people. Nothing to do with uh, sponsors or anything like that. We're not in anyone's back pocket, but there's things that um, have happened that we need to see the full combination to before we can ever speak about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a step back. Sarah is overjoyed. I told her this at about six o'clock this morning. She's overjoyed to hear that I'm saying I'm not doing anything. I'm gonna focus totally on my health and my back, my lower back. I want to get this feeling better again, which I hope it will. And then getting the exercise in and then say, I'm at that 100%. We can make some bloody good videos. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to do. In the interim, if there's enough interest from people, I might make some videos like this because I enjoy walking. Um, just giving you updates on on how I'm doing, how my recovery is. Uh, I don't really want to talk about uh, retirement and finance and that stuff because uh, I don't, I'm always very careful of speaking out of turn, saying the wrong thing and, uh, um, you know, sending someone in the wrong direction on their, on their journey and their planning. So there you go. Another thing that we've been batting around between us is, um, we have got this expertise built through. We wanted to sell everything we own to travel the world. We've done it. We've retired early 
financially, oh, I'll tell you what, some of the comments we get, we get people saying, oh, it's all right you're doing this. I think, okay, it's shut as well. It's all right you're doing this for 10 years, but what happens then when you're gonna be destitute? That isn't the plan. We're not idiots. Well, no, you lot, if you're still here, you know that. But people just seem to get us so wrong. So we're planning to travel for 10 years before we settle down. And uh, we just think that we've got so much right that we've thought consultancy. Would anyone be interested in consultancy sessions with Sarah and I? Sarah talking about things from a female perspective around the psychology of what we're doing and me talking about the financial side, but also psychology from a male side because that's uh, very different. So what we're thinking about doing is opening up a calendar, um, uh, having consultancy sessions. Not going to be any time soon because of my back. Is this something that we should pursue? Because if we go into, you know us well enough to know we won't just say, all right, we'll set it up and away we go. We'll put a load of work into it and we'll make sure that there's the right structure in place to ensure that anyone who reaches into their pocket and gives us some cash for consultancy, get real, real value for money. So let us know in the comments if that is something you're interested in. Last week's video, someone commented to say, Neil, you're just rambling. They don't know anything yet. This is rambling. <laughs> but in videos, I've got to say, when people say you're rambling, that's the one time where I can be very certain in my response when, when I read and go, no, I'm not. Because our videos are so well scripted, when I say well scripted, not full of myself, what I mean is so tightly scripted so that I don't repeat myself, I get a message across and I'll move on to the next one. There's no gap where, you know, oh, there's a vista and some nice music, none of that, get to it. This is rambling and I apologize for rambling. I apologize also to our Patreons because we had such exciting plans, you know, if you're a patron, such exciting plans for our uh, live streams too, coming up over the next week. And for exactly the same reason, we're postponing those. So sorry guys. So are we quitting YouTube? For a short time, yes. Long time, we'll have to see. If I don't improve, um, I, can't, I, can't, I can't carry on doing YouTube, feeling the way I do today. Um, can you do me a favor? If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And secondly, if you haven't already done so, because I never do this, ring that little bell. There's a little bell which notifies you when we get more videos out. If you don't do that, if we're off air for a month or two or however long it is, um, and you've not done that, when we release a video, you won't know it's out there because YouTube will you know, put us to the back of the queue. So ring that bell. And that way you will be informed. Um, and actually, uh, if you look below the in the description of this video, you'll see a link to our um, uh, newsletter. And because of my back issues, I've not been keeping that up. But if you haven't already signed up, sign up to the newsletter, because then when we are coming back, I'll email everybody to say, hey, great news. Okay, I may not email anytime soon, because emailing is a lot of hard work at the minute. So, sorry about all of this, sorry about the rambling. Uh, sorry to let you all down. I feel like I'm letting you down. I feel like I'm letting Sarah down. I feel like I'm letting a lot of people down at the minute. Our dream is world travel. What's yours?